Hold on. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of YHP TV. That's your handmade business television. Uh, I'm Isaac Watson. I'm co-director of Academy of Handmade, along with this lady here, maybe that side, whichever side she's on, uh, <laughs> Sharon. Uh, feeling a little goofy today. I think I had too much coffee this morning. Uh, anyway, Your Handmade Business Television is uh, basically a weekly series that we do uh, of live videos where we try to help you navigate all things hashtag maker life. Uh, and we, at, at Academy of Handmade, we try to offer a support network and uh, programs that will help you with your business. Uh, we like to talk about what is going on, on or we, we tr sorry, we like to talk about things. I'm totally botching this, Sharon. Uh, mm -hmm. We like to not talk, talk about things that help you work on your business, not in your business. Uh, words that are hard today, apparently. Um, and today we're going to talk about creating a network of support uh, and some of the different ways that that can take shape and why that's important in your business. Though I think that probably uh, goes without saying why support networks are helpful. Um, but before we get into that, we have to do our little bit of weekly dish on making it. Oh, yes. Um, and I hope you've all seen it. dish about this week, though, huh? I know. There isn't. It was a relatively tepid episode. I mean, like, there were some good projects. But... Yeah, because, I mean, I think that happens in a lot of competition shows where, like, in the middle, it's kind of not as, um, you. it's a little bit more, uh, I guess, maybe predictable in your, your I don't know. Um, you're just sort of like waiting for the grand finale in some ways, but, and like, everyone's usually pretty good too, but I will say, I feel like the end of this episode, they tried to create drama by looking like maybe Robert was going to go home. It's like, please, no, no editors. No, we know what's happening. Yeah. Uh, I, it was nice to see Robert get some more credit where credit was due. His, um, his faster craft project was really impressive. I, mm -hmm. just had, I had a moment where I just had to, we've been watching it after the fact, not live. And so I was like pausing it and I was like, those pretzels, his little arms coming out of the cake is swimming is so I really, I mean, I feel like he had one of the best, um, what are the, it had to have, it needed to be kinetic in some ways. Mm -hmm. Like it needed to have like energy, have movement. <clears throat> and I thought his has had the best movement for sure. Yeah. Um, theories on crafters going after the sweets over the savory snacks? Do you think that I feel like good? this is a weird bias because I definitely feel like cake is a snack. <laughs> cake is so Maybe, I don't know if you guys agree, but cake is definitely a snack. Cookies are snacks. Um, I, you know, I feel like this is, I, I think there's just some meat bias here on the part of, uh, Amy and Nick, so. Yeah, for sure. Um, I also, I did, there were, so I think the big, the big thing for me was the absence of any mention of Etsy, especially by our dear judge, Dana. Um, and that was kind of refreshing, though I have to totally admit that I called the trend reference that was coming the second I saw the Shibori dyed uh fabric i was like oh and here comes dana she's gonna talk about how trendy it is right now definitely um what was i gonna say man i had i had a thought kind of regarding that dang it where did it go oh I, they it was it's interesting that this show feels like it's like a real need to like educate people about crafting Hmm. And I'm just, and like, cause they did that whole, like, what's in your bucket thing. And I feel like there's this whole thing about like educating Amy on like crafts and, and things like that. I don't think that's bad, but I, I would just think about like, what are the other shows where they sort of like follow that educational bent hmm. the same way? And I'm, I'm just wondering like, from like what perspective they decided that they felt they needed that to, to be part of this show. Um, that people needed to learn what a, what it, what was like the little, the metal thing that you use to, you know, texturize clay or whatever. Like, I don't, yeah I don't feel like in, in, um, 
I mean, even in like Bake Off, which is what this is kind of supposed to be about, right? Like, um, I don't feel like they do it that much. They think they just assume everyone at home is understands baking. And I don't, I, it's not a good or a bad thing necessarily. I'm just, I'm, it's just a thing I noticed. Hmm. I wonder if that's one thing they set out to do to make this show different and a little more accessible for people. So it's less about, I don't know, I guess it feels... But is it, how is a baking show, like, do you know what I mean? Like, what, uh, I don't know about really, like, sewing or whatever, but, like, I feel like they think the audience is smart enough on, like, Project Runway to, like, understand and, like, keep up with what these people are doing, even if you don't understand really what high fashion is. Mm. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Like, there's almost an assumption that, like, most of the audience is clueless about this stuff or can't pick up context clues. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know if it makes it, if it's like helping to educate people or if it's the opposite and it's like dumbing things down for people where they should just, you know, everyone's second screens now, you know, right? Like you're constantly looking online to see like, what is this thing that they just talked about? Like what is Shibori or whatever? Um, Though that makes sense that they kind of explain it in that context, but yeah like the the tools thing was like okay like what is this Mm. do you think it has anything to do with the fact that blueprint is such a big sponsor but it's like not integrated though Mm -hmm. really i feel like they tried to weirdly do like a blueprint integration in one of their little vignettes and i was like where did this come from yeah but I don't know. Um, I'm still holding hopes that my prediction from last week about Amy taking on a DIY project of her own will come true. But after this episode, I think my, my, I'm starting to think that they, um, uh, that, that, that was just totally a fantasy of mine. Yeah. Um, it could happen. I feel like if you were, if you were producing this show, you definitely, this would definitely be a good idea. Um, so Jennifer and I feel like Nessa and even Kylie agreed that cake is a snack. Pies are snacks. I'm just, I'm, dessert can be snacks, guys. I don't know what else to tell you. I I would, my argument would be that. It can be like an after dinner thing, the way a dessert is. Yeah. Right then yeah my thought was like cake and pies start as a dessert like the very first helping is as a dessert but then once it's a leftover that's serious snack and maybe even breakfast territory i don't know i'm just saying what do you what like a, the a cupcake and a muffin are not that's that far apart, really. <laughs> so it's basically the same thing right? is there snack yes Thank you. Another thing that is sweet that is a snack. Everything is snacks. Basically. Nick has a meat bias. This is just what it is. <laughs> Give me this. Anyway. Uh, okay. So I think that covers our dish for making it this week. Uh, we do want to mention that this episode of YHB TV is brought to you by our signature Jumpstart Your Handmade Business program. Uh, Sharon and I, in the course of our work with makers over the years, have met thousands of makers, and we started to notice some trends in the things that are holding them back from their business, and that's why we created Jumpstart, uh, to help you get clarity and define your roadmap to success. And I think that this applies to uh, both first-time maker businesses, people who are just starting out, as well as people who've been at it for a while. It is so easy to let your business take the reins of your life and things can change. And sometimes you just need to step back and think through those fundamental goals and numbers and things like that. So um, our Jumpstart program is uh, something that you can join at any point. We are currently working on a uh, slight update to it. And uh, there'll be some more information about co- that coming soon, but you can definitely uh, jump on board that now and then benefit for, from lifetime updates of the program as we go through them. Uh, so if you are interested in learning more, you can click on the green button below the video or uh, go to academyofhandmade.com slash jumpstart. Yep. Um, I will say it is, It is a pretty great program that if you have been in the summer blahs and kind of like distracted from your business and are like, all right, I need to like 
get back in the swing of things, the program can really help you. And I want to say that the program is also like one of those things that like can make sense and you can kind of like attack it in in parts. So it's like you can kind of take what you need from it too. So for sure. Yeah. I definitely think that if you've been in a summer slump, this is a really great, a really great um, program to get to get into. Anyways, we have today um, building a network of support, which we took from the 80s movie theme because 80s movies are the theme for this month. We don't have like a specific theme like this usually, but we decided for August 80s movies titles would be fun. So here's what we're doing. Um, and so this is Stand By Me, which did you did you get to watch Stand By Me, Isaac? It's, I haven't. It's, it's, it's away from you in Oregon. How did you not see this yet? I don't. I don't know. I feel like it should be part of my childhood, but um, I, right? Yeah, it's it was not. It is a shame that you have not watched it. It is. It's a, it's a really good movie. Which and I think I kind of knew this, but just like with the his new show, like remembering that um, it's actually like based on a Stephen King story too. Yeah, which is why I'm intrigued now. And like, yeah. don't get me wrong, Will Wheaton as a child act, child actor is really obnoxious. Like, I'm, I love Star Trek, and my husband and I just recently rewatched the entire Next Generation series because they remastered it, and he's kind of insufferable. But I'm hoping that at least as as a younger child, uh. He's a good love to hate as a youth. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. When I was a kid watching Next Generation, Will or uh, Wesley Crusher was kind of like my idol. But as an adult, rewatching, it's, it's bad. Yeah, it's, not, it's mostly yeah. bad writing. I think. Yeah, totally. Um, but anyways, if you haven't watched it, it is a great movie. It is. Yeah, it's it's a classic for a reason. It's also pretty heavy. And then when I was like rethinking about like dang like so many of these movies about children were really heavy like labyrinth <laughs> like what creepy af <laughs> like these kids are searching for a dead body and stand by me like honestly like <laughs> ooh disease anyways um but there will be no dead bodies today <laughs> yeah right. I'm thinking sorry, uh, I just had a fleeting thought about weekend at Bernie's too. Right. And dead bodies. <laughs> All right. So first point in this stand by me, which we're taking to talk about building a network of support <clears throat> for your business, which I will just say, I think it is so important that I mean, obviously, like, this is why one of the reasons Academy of Handmade started is that community is so important to having a business, especially a business like this, where you're doing so much work alone that it's very easy to hermit yourself and to discount the value of connections with other people, especially in-person connections, um, and feel like you're doing fine. And, you know, if you just plug through it and get all the information you need online, you'll be able to like somehow like be a robot and output everything. And that's just, that's just not the case, especially if you're trying to be creative. So um, the first point I would say is to not underestimate the value of in-person connections. Yeah, I think the, I mean, this is kind of the whole reason I got into this realm of, helping maker businesses is realizing how easy it is to get all wrapped up in your own head about what you're doing and just in go, go, go mode and letting, uh, letting the work take its hold of you. And I think having, um, having the, that connection to people that was like where I first like because I started when I started my Etsy business I was or my sorry when I started my handmade business I was just selling on Etsy initially and it was all online and I was just like going off of what a couple friends were telling me I should do and trying to figure it out and it wasn't until I actually went to a meetup with a bunch of other handmade business owners I was like oh my god these are my people and they're like, they want to help me and they're looking out for me and they're sharing their experiences. And there's so much 
like there's so much resource and friendship to be had in building this that that that's what sold me. I was just like, I'm, I'm in like, let's, let's do this. Um, and let's do it together. And so I think, uh, it's, it's easy to get stuck online. It's easy to get wrapped up in the, um, the day to day of just doing your thing, uh, with your creative self, but, um, the be, getting in person with people is so important. Even this, like us talking to you through video is a little bit better than a, you know, a massive comment thread on a Facebook post or something, but, um, sharing that experience with people in person is I'm here for that basically. Yeah. The dynamics of being in person are just definitely different than the dynamics of online. And sometimes online is great for other things and those dynamics work better. But I think when you're trying to do like personal connections, like there's a lot of stuff that needs to happen, um, offline or at least in a more less, you know, threaded commenty social media way. And like, being on a phone or a video conference is at least, you know, giving you that dynamic. So um, our advice, I think, to be to think to start thinking about those in-person connections is like think locally. What are the meetup groups like a lot of times, like, you know, people post stuff locally on meetup. You can do it yourself. I know it does have like a weird cost. You can also try to just like do Facebook events yourself and just start organizing with your own community um look through like what your like parks and rec thing is and if there's like classic creative classes that are being offered that you can participate um you know community college courses that you could take for business or creativity and just sort of like build those connections there and i don't think they always have to be like i am meeting somebody else who is doing another handmade business exactly like me <laughs> you can still learn and get inspired and get that support um, even if it's not somebody who is exactly on the same page as you with, you know, what you're doing. Exactly. I think, um, in anything that you can do to look around you and see, okay, what do I have here? Do I, is there, is there a local like ceramic studio where that has like open clay night or so I don't even know if that's a thing, but, <laughs> um, even like, no, you know, open clay <laughs> uh, and, you know, stitch and bitch sessions and you know, anything like that, where you are, uh, where you can share making with other people around you is going to go a long way. I mean, it's honestly like the, you look at making it the show and those, those people are building relationships with each other as they're working on these projects. Um, and yes, it's in this like manufactured uh, TV show format, but these are, these are people who are getting to know each other through the act of making and sharing a creative space together. So I think um, starting locally and thinking about um, what is in, in your immediate vicinity, what do you have access to? Library programs, all kinds of stuff. Um, they're, they're great ways low cost free ways to meet other makers uh, and start to build relationships with them. Yep. And I would say that even, you know, in, in relatively small towns, you'd probably be surprised that there's, there's something happening there. It might take a while to find, you know, that handful of people that are similar on the same page as you, um, even if they're just a little bit, you know, on the same page there, you know, and even, even at sometimes sometimes people are just looking for a leader to rally people to do something too. So it could be you, you could be that person. Mm -hmm. You want to do the next point? Yeah. Uh, make friends at craft shows. And this seems like, this seems like, well, duh, make friends at craft shows, but it can actually be really hard because you are all so busy setting up your booths and, uh, selling and, you may have a chance to chat briefly during a little break with your booth neighbor, but um, that's like prime opportunity to get to know other makers and to share the experience of running a business at the same time. Um, and I think that there are a couple ways you can do that. Um, one, I know some uh, craft show organizers will do like a little networking night beforehand for for vendors i know um i don't know if they still do it but crafty wonderland here in portland they used to 
do that um, where they they'd hand out like show posters and postcards and stuff, but they'd also use it as just kind of a social hour. Um, I used to uh, I remember I always loved uh, going out to celebrate after a craft show. Um, and so I would like try and make new friends with with people across the aisle or whatever from me and then invite them out to dinner afterward or something like that. There, there are plenty of ways that you can you can try to cultivate those relationships while you're actually there. I think the saddest thing is that I think a lot of times people will go to a show, have have good relationships with the people around them, talk to them, whatever. And then you'll have spent, you know, one, maybe two days together doing this whole show. And then you got on so well, but like nobody took the effort to be like, I have, can I have your card? Can I email you? Or let's get, do something, you know? And I think it just is a matter of sometimes being proactive. And I know that we're like adults and making friends as adults is like somehow become like weird and awkward for whatever reason. Like, but you know, like don't, don't assume that everyone's lives are so busy. They can't go out to coffee or dinner with you sometime. And that, you know, it doesn't hurt to just email them. So I would say try to be proactive in that. Get people's cards so that you can contact them and then let them know because that will help hold you accountable that like you want to go out to eat or whatever with them or you want to call them sometime or what have you. Um, yeah, I would say my, my so my husband just uh, he makes handmade bicycles and he had like a bike show this last weekend and they they, there were people there who, it's just so weird, it's face to face, like he knew basically everyone there from online, but so many people there connected with him differently. And like people were like, oh, you should put your bike in our shop and all of this other stuff that it's like, you know, you've been friends online all this time. You could have just asked him to put a bike in your shop, like, I don't know, two years ago when you already <laughs> like knew each other. But like, there's something about like, being in person that lets people more freely, you know, sort of make these, you know, gestures and suggestions and connections. Like it, I don't know what it is, but it is just deeper and more meaningful, more personal than just like you are now not a random person online, even though you really weren't a random person online before. It's just, it's just how our brains are wired. I think. Yeah. I, I think that, um, my theory on this is that there like when you're having a conversation online there's still this layer of um posturing i guess like yeah. where you're you're trying to present like you have your shit together and you um have you want to look like a success and you uh you don't necessarily want to look like an idiot Whereas when you're face to face, there's some there's something about sharing body language and um, being able to just kind of naturally take conversation as inspiration hits, and it's not this like calculated. What am I going to say in response? And I can edit as I go. It's like what comes out of your mouth comes out of your mouth, and then you just run with it. So there's, I guess there's a probably a deeper level of improvisation that yeah. creates a more um, healthy relationship. I think. Yeah. It's, it's that dynamism. I just definitely think that's it. Every time we talk about this, like every time that we like leave our homes, because like, you know, I feel like when you do, when you work from home, like it's just easier to get hermitier and hermitier, like even like leaving to like go shopping that has become like in my mind, a bigger like excursion than it is. <laughs> <laughs> like just to yeah. get groceries <laughs> just because you know I just don't do it so much but it's not that big of a deal but you know every time I leave my house to go to go see someone or go go to some kind of meetup it's it's always worth it like it's never the big scary thing that I make it out to be <laughs> I don't know <laughs> yeah it's yeah. true um okay so let's talk a, I mean we've talked a lot about in-person stuff let's talk about spending time online because you can't just not be online, especially as a maker business, there's a certain component that you need to conduct online. Um, so one, one piece of advice that we have, especially in Facebook groups and online communities that you might be a member of is to give and not just take. 
I think you're going to find deeper connections and share better experiences if you um, are willing to be open and vulnerable and sharing your experiences and giving help instead of always just asking for it. Um, And part of that is also don't be a lurker. I yeah, workers. I think Easy yeah, I think once you actually start engaging with people in a group, you you feel more part of it. Like it's just you know it's just a thing where once you once you actually decide to be a part of something, you are a part of it for the most part. Like most groups don't actively try to shove you away after that. Like you're you're just in the group. Like it's that informal with like Facebook or whatever. Um, so you know participate and then you get seen by other people as you know for the personality that you are and they interact with you and you develop rapport with them and then um you can start to ask questions and feel more open about you know what's going on in your business feel free to vent whatever it is but i feel like with with groups and online communities it's so important that you're that you're initiating talking and not just letting other people carry you know you know all the weight in a conversation. Yeah. I do want to say that there are a lot of people who are introverted and it it can be, especially as an introvert, it's easy to be a lurker and to just passively participate. Um, I am also moderately introverted. Um, and so I, I understand this feeling. Um, and I just want to encourage those introverts to push themselves a little bit outside of their comfort zone and sorry, I'm just reading these chat messages in there. Our, our introverted support group in the chat. Yes. <laughs> um, but I, I think you will find that that the more you do make an effort, um, even if you do it in a, in a way that is more introverted, um, I think that can really help you develop deeper relationships than what you would get if people don't even know you're there. Yep, totally. Um, again, it's more than just the soaking up the information. There is a dynamicness, dynamism to giving that, giving some of your information thoughts away to people and it comes back to you. And it's part of that, you know, popcorn of like springing off each other in, in something, even if it's not, you know, some huge revelation, it just adds to that connection. Excuse me. I felt like I have someone cut my throat. Um, the next point is that, um, I know that this can be hard sometimes because they just don't always understand, but asking for help from friends and family, um, can really be a good part of your support, support network. If you know how to box them in kind of, if you understand, okay, when they tell me this, I have to, you know, don't don't necessarily think that they're giving me, you know, business advice. <laughs> if they unless unless they really understand your business, but you know, um, even people who are in business will have business advice for you, and you're like, yeah, I am not a startup. <laughs> yeah, I I think the the big thing for me when thinking about friends and family is that I. I have to remind myself that I don't know all of their friends and family. And so if I can, if I can ask questions in the right way or talk about my business in a way that, um, that does kind of box in the inevitable offhanded comments or misunderstandings and things like that, I cannot tell you how many times I've had to post on Facebook. This is what I do. And yet people still don't understand what I do. Um, (laughs) But uh, that can actually, like, there are connections that you could have um, either, like, networking for new customers or or just getting help from another business owner that's gone through a similar thing that you may not realize you have access to at, essentially at your fingertips. Um, and so we always encourage reaching out to friends and family, uh, especially if you're going through troubled time, because they are the ones who are going to be the most empathetic to you as well, because they have closer relationships than um, anybody in a business group might. Um, but 
that may and that may help. Want to advocate for you too. Like they're yeah. they're really truly cheering for you and will want to help you, even if uh, you're going to have to like disregard a lot of the help because it really isn't helpful. <laughs> but like they 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 want to come up with solutions for you. So yeah, for sure. Okay. Uh, okay, so another thing. Um, well, actually, I just want to talk about this real quick. Heather mentioned in the chat, talking to other business owners outside of Handmade can be very helpful. And I completely agree. Um, there, it is, and Sharon kind of touched on this earlier, but there's getting outside of your sphere can be beneficial because it helps you think about things in a different way. Bringing different perspectives to the table can be really helpful. Excuse me. And this kind of plays into um, our next point, which is masterminds and group programs can be very beneficial in this regard, especially if it's a mastermind where you are not all running the same type of business uh, or a group program or something like that. So uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with what a mastermind is, that's usually a group of business owners who comes together. Typically, they're self-organized and they meet regularly to work on business together. And usually each person takes a turn at a meeting or a conference call or whatever uh, to talk about what's going on in their business. And then everybody kind of group thinks around it. Um, there are self-organized free masterminds. There are like expert led paid ones. We offer a mastermind program. That's kind of a facilitated um, curriculum based thing. It's a little bit different. Um, and so it can take lots of different forms, um, but they can be really helpful because they tend to be focused on business. And so you can develop relationships with other people and develop a support network that is keen on helping you improve your business. Um, and they can also help you be a little more vulnerable than you might be uh, in a small group of people in an intimate setting um, than just, you know, sharing your your woes or or tempering your experiences in a in a Facebook group. And I feel like these programs can really give you perspective because you will even if they're all handmade businesses, you will start to see how your business is different. Um, and similar. And there are times when you'll be like, oh, man, it's kind of cool. I don't have to deal with this problem that this other person deals with because that's not my business. Like, you can kind of start to be grateful that, like, you know, <laughs> I guess in some ways it gives you perspective on, like, you know, when you're feeling like your business is a total failure, you're like, oh, man, this person's struggling, too. And, oh, man, they really have a big problem over here with this thing. Glad I don't have that, you know. So, um, and then also it can help, you know, like you said, with, with the, the group think of, of trying to solve problems in your own business and just there are certain fundamentals of like selling and buying and marketing that like are true for everyone. So I, I don't think, you know, you have to be in one that's specifically handmade, though ours is all handmade businesses. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think if I had anything else to add on that. I don't think I do. Uh, the last one, which kind of touches on what I said a little bit before, but it's like, just actually start something yourself and go out and lead. Like I said, like you might be in a town that is just waiting for a creative, you know, person to like lead the charge and organize everyone. And I know that this, that can sound like even crazy, crazier, uh, vulnerable <laughs> when you're introverts like but uh, all it has to even be is just like you just want to do like a pop-up or something you want to teach a class at you know the library whatever it is um find a way to like get others on board with this creativity and it's not even necessarily that you have to do the scary introverted things like go and talk to everyone to get them there you know if you're doing it at a library, the library might be helping you get people there. So it's, it, there's, there's ways to do it without being as vulnerable as you think. <laughs> yeah. And I think in some ways, I think that taking on ownership of, of leading something can actually help the introversion a bit because instead of just being a passive participant where it's easy to just back out, there's a, there's like a level of commitment. I found this in stuff that I do where if I'm like, yes, I will attend this thing and I will, you know, volunteer because then I, or 
yeah. you know, whatever, or, or lead a, uh, an icebreaker or something like that. There's, there's like, I'm making a commitment to do something. And so that's going to be more likely that I will actually go there because I feel like I owe it to, you know, the, the people there to be there. Yeah. It also makes me feel like, so this is for me, like I have a role and so I don't have to like weirdly like network with people just like as a participant. And I'm like, oh, I'm the person in charge. Like I get it like, you know, be like, do this, do that. What's this is how we're going to do things. And you sort of automatically like have, I guess, that networking built in a little when you're that when you're that person uh, leading all of it. So, yeah. Yeah, I think volunteering, it's funny, volunteering didn't actually make it on the list, but um, but volunteering is is a fantastic way to do that, especially if you're trying to do things on a budget, um, because it, you know, whether you're volunteering at a conference or um, at, for helping a teacher of a class, like you get, you, it, in some ways it's a little self-serving, but you get to participate in a way that, um, that you can benefit from, but also contribute to um, and so that that can go a long way toward breaking down some introverted tendencies, um, but also putting some skills to use and being able to, it's kind of win-win all around. Definitely. All right. Uh, that is our list. So um, we are going to have you join us next week, same time, same channel. <laughs> um, and we're going to talk about... Uh, Ghostbusters and getting rid of the ghosts in your business. Ooh, creepy. <laughs> Slimers working around here somewhere. Yep. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we'll have anything for this one to uh, costumes or whatnot, but <laughs> effects. <laughs> um, but yes, join us next week because I actually think it's going to be a really good one. Yeah. I um, I'm excited about it. So uh, see you in the Facebook group. If not, until then, thanks for joining us. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs> it was for